to get started, I would like to cover a few important housekeeping items. Firstly, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available to you soon, so please look out for a link in your email. Secondly, if you have a technical or content related question today, please feel free to ask them at any time. You can use a Q&A box that is located to the right hand side of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we will go through as many questions as we can, but if you have further questions, feel free to contact our speaker directly after the presentation. And with that, I'm very happy to introduce our speaker today, Srinath Natarajan. Srinath is currently a Global Director at 2H in Kuala Lumpur. He has over 17 years of special ex specialist experience in minimum facility platforms, novel installation methods, deep water riser engineering, naval architecture, marine hydrodynamics, subsea monitoring and integrity management of subsea systems. Shri is responsible for delivering several turnkey minimum facility platforms and deep water riser system delivery as a project manager and sponsor, ensuring technical, commercial and contract management from concept to installation. And with that, I will pass things over to Shri to get us started. Thank you, Abby, for the warm introduction. For all the participants, I'm excited to be here today speaking on the topic and hope you will all find the information useful. I'll begin with the outline describing the integrity challenges on the fixed platform conductors. Then I'll follow up with the integrity management process. I'll walk through the integrity assessment approach and some of the tools that we have developed for various operators uh, in the region and around the world. I'll showcase a few commonly deployed uh, repair methods uh, that has helped in uh, extending the service life of the aging platform conductors. And I'll wrap up with uh, three case studies uh, that showcases various repair methods that we have deployed. Some of the integrity challenges I have listed in here. So the, the, there are several platforms out there that are either reaching the end of design life or have already exceeded their design life. So therefore, that requires uh, life extension work to be done on it. On these old aging platform conductors, the basic challenge that we face is uh, very limited uh, records on the maintenance as well as uh, the general uh, service history of those platform conductors. Yeah followed by the fact that these wells have been installed many years ago. There is very little records on uh, the well construction sequence that has been ab adopted back then, in such as uh, what sort of cementing levels that has been uh, in, the, in the wells. If we combine these challenges along with the fact that corrosion is an eternal thing and heavily corroded sections combined with these challenges, we have a uh, sudden risk of uh, failure of these conductor systems. I'll move on to giving you an overview of integrity management process. Yeah. So um, have highlighted here the, the top four uh, steps that we normally adopt when it comes to integrity management process. And it all begins with uh, inspection and monitoring and gathering as much information as possible. The primary information that we will look for is to gather the wall thickness of these conductor systems. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, we use uh, wire rope te uh, technicians to able to go down there using ultrasound to capture the wall thicknesses around the conductor pipe. Yeah. And second aspect of it is to visually uh, record what sort of uh, corrosion levels that has been observed on the conductor system, such as pitting corrosion. Yeah, because these are uh, really um, uh, important to determine in order to assess the integrity of the system. And most important is to look out for what sort of preloads and well construction uh, sequence that has been adopted in these particular wells, such as uh, knowing the top of cement. Top of cement uh, plays a very huge role in uh, knowing uh, what level of preload or the conductor uh, load that has been shared from all of the well casings and intermediate casings down to the tubings. Once we gather all of this data, we move on to the second aspect of it is to assess and analyze the as 
install condition of this particular conductor system. So we will approach it in a non-linear finite element uh, method in the sense that there are a lot of non-linearities in this particular system. You have got conductor to the soil uh, interaction, which is non-linear in nature. You have got conductors that are guided through the platforms. Also, there are gaps between the conductors and the guides. So that is a non-linear uh, response as well. So you have to capture all of the non-linearities in the whole system. And along with it, you also will have to get the as uh, access conditions with respect to the site-specific soil data, site-specific uh, metocean data, the actual preload that these particular conductors are being uh, installed in, and the corrosion levels in these conductor systems captured in the analysis. So once we get this nonlinear finite element analysis model captured and updated, we proceed on to obtaining what level of bending stresses these particular conductor systems are going through. So this is very important. These are a bending dominated system and at the same time axial load plays a very key role as well. And it is also essential in knowing whether uh, these particular conductor systems have to go through any uh, production or what workover equipment workover equipment to be installed on it later date. So that will enable us to establish what is the criteria for uh, deploying a repair system. And once we know that, we will identify what level or what type of repair system to be deployed, what is the methodology that we have to adopt, yeah, in look at the possibility of accessibility to those conductor system and uh, ab ability to install these sort of repair systems in place, whether it requires any extensive shutdown or not. So these are all the factors that plays a very key role in knowing the, um, the, the, the repair system to be deployed. <clears throat> I've sort of uh, uh, captured this integrity management process in a nutshell here, but we have developed a, a guideline for these uh, uh, aging platform conductors. You could uh, refer to the Energy Institute guidelines that we have authored along with our other sister companies and it is titled Managing structural integrity of offshore platform conductors. So that has been um, about to be rolled out anytime soon. So that will prove to be a valuable resource in identifying what level, what are the integrity management process. Now I move on to the assessment approach. In the next few slides, I'll walk through the sort of uh, physics to capture when it, when it comes to aging conductors. So the first and foremost, uh, so aspect to look out for is the well construction type. Yeah, so some of the conductors um, are primarily environmental uh, barrier conductors. Some cases, um, uh, they actually, the, the well heads are installed and the starter head is locked onto the conductor system. So those conductor system with, which are performing mostly an environmental barrier, the surface casing is taking on all of the well casing loads and therefore in case of any thermal loads, the surface casing and the well head can actually grow independent of the conductor system. So that is very essential to understand the well construction sequence. Now, second, level, second detail is to capture the cementing level inside the conductors. So this paves way to the preload that is going on into the conductor system because during the well construction sequence, the casing, surface casing, all the intermediate casing weights are um, gradually transferred over onto the uh, conductors. So that in the event there is any cement shortfall means that there is higher load being transferred onto the conductor system. So that is very important to understand. And lastly is the operations as in what is the historical and the future uh, operations that you're going to go through. Conductor systems normally go through very uh, three essential aspects of it, strength, stability, and fatigue. Yeah, the strength, axial load, higher the axial load, higher the strength being utilized. Uh, guides, uh, conductor guides along the platform uh, plays a very essential role in uh, providing the stability by restricting the free span. At the same time, it also restricts the conductor movement and improves the fatigue. And it eventually boils down to the, the equipment capacities such as connectors and so on. So here in this particular slide, I tried to condense the uh, overall access condition evaluation in a very simple flow, uh, flow matrix here. 
So after we gather all of the uh, necessary input data in terms of the actual assets condition, sol, metocean, we set up uh, the finite element model that is representative of the assets condition. And we combine that with the, the load case matrix, such as uh, the existing production uh, scenario, uh, future, any workover scenario that has been uh, mulled. So all of that needs to be captured as uh, the load case matrix, uh, normal operating condition, extreme storm loading conditions, including uh, fatigue loading. So then that will result in a detailed global analysis of all these various loading conditions. We will run that for uh, several wall thickness that we think uh, the conductor system may be exposed to over the years. And this will play an important role in identifying what is our wall thickness guideline as to what is the minimum wall thickness to which we can uh, allow the opera operation for the conductor system to continue further. If an operator is um, uh, having a lot of various uh, uh, platforms, various conductor configurations, uh, we will develop a very high level assessment tool that will help screen these um, various configurations in order to identify the most critical uh, configuration. So here, moving on to the assessment tool, uh, what you say, I see here in the picture to the left, bottom left is the uh, stress distribution for various wall thicknesses. And we have run that for uh, various conductor configuration with uh, diff differing preload levels. So the bottommost line showing the one with the lowest preload and the farthermost line is the one with the highest preload. So of course, higher the preload, higher the stress utilization over time, right? But this is when there is no corrosion, the wall thickness is as per the design. But as you can see here, over the service life, when you lose your wall thickness towards, let's say, for example, a 50% wall thickness loss, the preload plays a bigger role, as in the ones that have got the higher preloads can actually result in a, uh, exceeding the allowable limits of conductor operation, whereas those that are in the lower preload levels may still be acceptable for operation. So this is very essential in order to screen the high level and identify what is the corrosion limit to which we can work to. And then we look out for the details of it in terms of where is the critical location along the conductors so that we can deploy the repair system appropriately. If in the event a conductor repair is not required, we will prescribe certain level of inspection and monitoring and preventing further corrosion in order to continue the, uh, the operations on the conductor system. So with this, I move on to uh, various repair methods that we have uh, deployed uh, over time. Uh, for those um, who are interested in knowing the assessment methodologies, uh, well, my colleague has done another webinar and uh, we can provide you the link if you're interested, which goes into further details in terms of what level of uh, um, conditions to be considered in, when it comes to evaluating these conductor systems. And you can also refer to the Energy Institute guidelines that we are rolling up. So the repair method here that you see, uh, this is the first of and the most commonly deployed repair method. It's a frictional sleeve or a weld-on sleeves. So the one on the left is a common frictional sleeve clamp uh, bolted together in a, like a split collar design. And it basically works on the, the sleeve coverage providing sufficient uh, skin grip and the bolt preload working its way to provide the necessary conductor integrity. And the welded sleeve section is fairly obvious in the sense that we are replacing the, the conductor system um, that has corroded and replaced it with another welded section in order to be able to provide the conductor integrity. The second method um, is also related to uh, cement shortfall. So in the sense that it helps in reducing the preload that is being uh, applied onto the conductor system. At the same time, it provides for adequate centralization of the surface casing within this conductor system and improve the buckling and the fatigue uh, behavior of that particular conductor system. Whereas the earlier one that I had shown, which is based on the uh, sleeve method, is primarily targeted about 
targeted for those that are uh, requiring strength as a concern. So moving on to the next aspect is the centralizers. Centralizers play a very important role. Um, over time, uh, where due to the aging conductors, you uh, see some of the centralizers either worn out or broken. So in those cases, centralizers play the essential role of minimizing the free span at the same time, minimizing the conductor motion within the guide system so that the fatigue response can be improved and allows you to extend the lifespan of the conductor system. Yeah. So that's uh, the third type of uh, repair system. And the last repair system that we've uh, sort of worked on in the past is to transfer the loading of the bell head and the bell casing loads back onto the adjacent platform deck structure. Okay, this is uh, not a very common uh, method that has been deployed. Uh, it has been seldom approached on uh, aging platform conductors because on the aging platforms, the, the load carrying capacity is also equally limited. But this can be considered if uh, we are looking at very uh, limited duration of uh, operations such as maybe bullheading and doing PNA on these wells that doesn't require extensive uh, uh, repair methods such as the one that I've shown in the past few uh, slides. So this is more for towards end of life where you want to look at you know possibly PNA of these particular well configurations. Okay, I move on to some of the case studies. I've got three case studies in here. Uh, first of the case study is um, this is a, uh, a conductor casing type where the surface casing is supporting the well loads and we have an environmental conductor which has got reasonable strength, uh, residual strength left within the system. In this case, there has been a severe corrosion observed on the conductor just beneath the wellhead system, uh, wellhead uh, connector and the uh, for unknown reasons, there has been um, uh, hydrocarbon released to the atmosphere that has been observed in certain cases. And this definitely, uh, when we perform and ran through the assessment of this whole conductor system, it was observed that the surface casing was insufficient to uh, provide adequate strength for this particular conductor system. So therefore, we looked at options of evaluating what would be the at appropriate means to provide the su supporting system. So we looked at transferring the wellhead and the well loads over to the adjacent conductor. So upon completing the strength and the stability of this particular scenario, where, whereby we established that transferring the load to the environmental conductor uh, is a viable mechanism of extending the service life. At the same time, we also had to provide for certain amount of uh, environmental um, pressure protection uh, to avoid any further hydrocarbon release. So therefore, we came up with a split collar design uh, that will provide for low transfer of the wellhead and the uh, well loads back onto the conductor. At the same time, employed a resin mechanism injected into this particular clamp uh, to provide uh, necessary uh, pressure uh, protection into the system. So we ran through this particular split collar design. It's a bespoke uh, design whereby we obtained the, the loads uh, during various operation, during normal operation, during bullheading operation as well, which is likely to be uh, performed at much later date. We looked at those loads coming from the global analysis as well as wellcat loads, combined that into this particular bespoke clamp design so that these clamps are designed to take that particular loading. So here is a picture of uh, the split collar uh, design being uh, fabricated on the left. And before we installed the split collar design, we did the surface preparation of the conductors, chipped off any of the excess uh, grout in there, applied uh, uh, corrosion coating to prevent further corrosion happening during the service life, and then deployed the, uh, the, the, the clamp, split collar clamp. So this is one such uh, case study. Uh, which is based on uh, a wellhead uh, sus uh, supported well load sus uh, supported on the surface casing where uh, we have an environmental conductor as a barrier there. Another case study is also related to um, 
excessive uh, external corrosion and also pitting corrosion observed in here. Also, for the same reason, we are, we are not sure about what caused the uh, hydrocarbon uh, release through these. Um, however, this being the uh, primary load bearing conductor, uh, such levels of corrosion was not acceptable to continue the uh, mitigation and therefore required an, uh, a repair system to be deployed on this. Also, we observed some of the conductor centralizers are worn out due to the age of this particular uh, conductor system. So therefore, what we came up with is uh, kind of like a novel split collar design again. So we established a conductor location further below the sea level in uh, whereby the conductor system, existing conductor system still has got sufficient integrity to carry the, the load transfer. So we deployed the split collar design at that particular location below the supply zone and replace the entire conductor system through the supply zone up until the, the wellhead. So that con the conductor was removed, uh, the grouting was chipped off and uh, a split collar sleeve was installed in place in sections due to the accessibility it was installed and there was grouting that was injected in to ensure that the, the the load transfer is sufficient. At the same time, we have uh, pressure uh, containment as well achieved. At the very top, uh, here is a picture that shows uh, the system being deployed. On the left here is the conductor uh, split collar uh, design that has basically been deployed just below the sea level using the divers. And on the picture on the right shows the, the split collar sleeves that has been installed in sections and in, uh, with the grout injected in between for multiple conductors and through the conductor guide. So this way we establish uh, relatively uh, a newer collar sleeve replacing the old corroded section and uh, the top insert sleeves provide for the load transfer between the wellhead to the newly inserted collar sleeve. So this provides for a new lease of life for, for this particular conductor system. Okay. The last one uh, of a case study here I've got is uh, on the conductor crack uh, that was observed. This was also on a very aging uh, platform conductor. We observed uh, wall thickness loss, but not so much of external wall thickness loss. As you can see here, uh, some of the conductor uh, coating is still intact. However, due to the excessive load over, over the service life, the conductor has lost its integrity and resulted in cracking. The only solution that was mulled at that time was to do a PNA on this. But even to do a PNA and to mount the surface equipment and be able to keep, uh, take on the, the bullheading loads that will go on to the conductor, the conductor needs to be uh, strengthened adequately to be able to uh, take on these um, loads. So what we uh, performed is to uh, model and simulate that particular uh, crack. We captured the exact dimensions of this conductor crack uh, through appropriate measurement and inspection, simulated that in a 3D model, ran it through uh, a finite element method. So this finite element method uh, went into the detail of uh, capturing the elastoplastic mechanism uh, behavior of that conductor system with and without the, uh, the conductor sleeve. So essentially, what we did is we achieved uh, this by providing sufficient coverage of this uh, conductor sleeve and appropriate uh, bolt preloads uh, in order to provide for uh, uh, the, uh, the adequate strength required during the subsequent conductor operations. So as you can see here in this particular finite element method uh, output under the extreme loading condition, we applied the max loading and you can see because of the presence of clamp on the conductor system, the stress levels are still within the allowable limits. So with this, I now come to the conclusion that, you know, we presented um, a structured integrity management process on some of these aging platform conductors. Yeah, so that we are able to first establish um, the access condition model evaluate based on the actual inspection and all the data gathered and um, evaluate whether 
that particular conductor system is really fit for purpose or not. If it is not, whether a conductor repair system, if deployed, will provide you the sufficient integrity in order to continue the operations further. And in cases where there are no um, uh, conductor repair systems are required, we can deploy uh, certain regular inspection and monitoring mechanisms and prevent further corrosion. And those ones that I have particularly discussed today is those conditions that require a certain amount of uh, repair system to be deployed in order to extend the service life of the conductor system and sufficient and, and, and safely operate those conductor systems. So by doing this, uh, we are able to um, avoid any uh, costly platform shutdowns, at the same time manage uh, any uh, risk associated with sudden failure of these conductor systems. Okay, so with that, I conclude my uh, presentation and I'll be um, happy to hand over back to uh, Abby for any questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Shri. Uh, we already have some great questions from our audience, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, what would happen if a conductor is identified to be more than 50% wall loss? Is that significant, and does it mean that it will have to be repaired? Thanks, Abby. That's a really good question. Um, I have shown in one of my earlier slides that there is a case where uh, a conductor that has gone through a conductor group with a certain lower preload group has gone through about 50% of wall loss and it is still uh, has got adequate strength in order to continue on for, for the remain, remainder of the service life. Whereas those with higher preload group were at risk. So in essence, uh, this is uh, not a direct yes or no answer to this. We have to evaluate based on that particular conductor configuration. And uh, once we know the assess condition, what that particular conductor uh, well construction sequence looks like, maybe the 50% wall, uh, wall loss is, uh, is uh, something that we can uh, accommodate for continuing the service life. Okay, great, thank you. Um, if a conductor repair is identified as a requirement, would it be cost effective to transfer the load path from the conductor to the top side's deck itself? Um, yeah, so on most of the aging uh, platform conductors, um, the, the platform itself has got uh, restricted uh, loading capacity that it can take on. Uh, some of the well construction loads, if you look, are in the tune of a couple of hundred uh, tons that will require to be transfer, transferred back to the, con uh, to the deck structure. If the conductor loads, the well loads can be adequately transferred and there is sufficient residual capacity on the platform, then we will consider that. If not, it will, um, it will have to be looked at from the point of view of other case studies that I've shown in here whereby we transfer the load back onto the conductor and react back onto the foundation instead. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, how the well loading supported in the interim, should there be a requirement for conductor sleeve replacement? Okay. Um, okay, during the, uh, the conductor repair evaluation process, um, we perform one of the essential uh, activity is to see whether, let's say, for example, when we strip off the external corroded conductors, um, whether the surface casing has got sufficient capacity in order to be able to support the remainder of the well loads. If there is sufficient strength, stability uh, for that temporary operation, then we will proceed with that surface casing taking on the load. If not, we will have to identify other means uh, of uh, supporting that well load. We have looked at cases where we will put on skid beams and, and uh, use uh, tension rings to transfer the well load, well head load uh, in the interim uh, back onto those skid beams and transfer back onto the conductor instead. So there are means where we evaluate uh, various options of uh, supporting the well loads in the interim during the repair operations. Okay, great, thank you. 
Um, how do you account for missing centralizers in your assessment when you rarely know when they were lost? That's a very good question. Um, uh, this definitely, the missing centralizers is, um, is definitely is a thing that needs to be looked after uh, as part of your regular platform inspections. So when we do the platform inspection and we identify the certain centralizers either stuck, that is also not a great uh, scenario, worn out centralizers, missing centralizers. We have seen cases where um, the centralizers are pre-installed centralizers at the time of conductor installation. And over the duration, due to the well thermal loading, the centralizers, uh, the, the well uh, has actually expanded and the centralizers have actually popped out of the, the guides. And therefore the conductor system did not have adequate centralization. So centralization uh, is, has a very key role to play because it reduces the free span, improves the stability of the system. It also reduces the overall conductor movement and improves the fatigue response. In that scenario that I mentioned where the centralizers just popped off and no centralization was observed, the, the conductor fatigue life actually dropped by an order of magnitude. So it is uh, very critical and needs to be looked after from the point of view of inspection, identify those centralizers that are uh, likely to be at risk, then that gets uh, taken into consideration in our assess condition evaluation. We can consider certain permutation combination in terms of certain centralizers are in place, certain things are worn out and missing, and see which are the ones that are critical and that requires to be replaced. I hope this answers the question. Great, thank you, Shree. Um, what sort of corrosion mitigation methods adopted to prevent further corrosion? Okay. Um, on one of the cases that we have used, um, we have used a zinc aluminum based uh, corrosion coating like Belzona is a good uh, for these kind of applications. So it provides for um, interim basis uh, to prevent further corrosion. Uh, there are cases where um, there's uh, corrosion observed in the surface casing, which is inside the conductor. So there is no accessibility to provide for those corrosion uh, mitigation. So we have considered uh, certain inner um, um, options whereby uh, either filling it up, topping it up with uh, diesel to prevent any of this anaerobic uh, sort of corrosion happening at those um, surface casing that are uh, that have got accessibility concerns. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Shree. Um, one more question: What is the most common cause of loss of conductor integrity? All right. Uh, statistically, based on whatever that we have looked at, um, we have looked at a lot of these conductors uh, on aging platforms in. Uh, Southeast Asia, Middle East, North Africa regions, and we find corrosion as the, the, the most common cause. And when we see these corrosion, severe corrosion, mixed up with um, some of the cases where we really do not know the, the, the history of the well construction, that's where the, the, the biggest um, detrimental factor comes in. Okay, thank you, Shri, for all the information on the topic. That is all the time we have today, but as mentioned earlier, if we didn't get to your question or if you would like to continue this discussion, please contact Shri directly using the details provided here. Thank you to our audience for your time and participation. We hope you all find this useful and will join us for more webinars in this series happening every two weeks during our time at home. Check out the 2H website for more details and to sign up. Again, please look out for the recording of the webinar in your email in the next 24 hours, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.